Welcome to Whole Health Visions. Our program provides a platform for professionals to inform and educate others about healthy options to improve your life and lifestyle. My name is Heidi Martin. And I'm Natalie LaRoche. Today we'll be talking with Natalie Proenka, a holistic life coach. How are you today? Good, thank you. I'm so glad and so good to be here. Happy to have you. Natalie, can you tell us a little bit about um, your why you decided to be a holistic health coach? Well, from my personal experience that I have started to tell you guys, I'm a breast cancer survivor. It has been 10 years. Wow. So I, yes, it's been a very long time, but I came to America when I was 25 years old. And I graduated here and then got a job as software engineer. And working in the IT field is very stressful job mm -hmm. and not eating well. I have typical diets like a lot of people here do, not sleeping enough, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy life. Then um, later on when I diagnosed breast cancer, I was in a shock. And that kind of changed my, uh, my lifestyle a little bit. So I went, I had chemotherapy, mm -hmm. I had radiation, mm -hmm. just like everybody else. I did not know any alternative approach. So I took all that conventional treatment and I have a lot of side effects. So do you want to hear about the side effects I have? Oh, sure. Look, if you Definitely. could tell us. Side effects of the, of the chemo and did you, have, you said you had radiation, radiation. too? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I was diagnosed breast cancer. Um, that time it was three centimeters, so that's what the doctor told me. Then I, I actually almost dying. I felt like when I had the second session of chemotherapy, I felt like I was dying. I had reaction, allergy reaction to the chemotherapy. Okay. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was no one with me. My husband left the hospital because it was a second time. The first time it was okay, but I didn't believe that I would lose my hair. I did not believe that. I told it's not me. That my doctor, my doctor told me, go get a, a wig. You're gonna lose hair. I said, no way. It's not me. Wow. You just didn't think that you were gonna no, lose your hair. No. Or I, I said no. Not everybody. And I was in denying mode for a long time. You mm -hmm. know, I did not believe. Even my family did not believe that I had breast cancer because no one in my in my family. So there was mm -hmm. no history of it in your no, family. No, no breast cancer mm -hmm. in my family. So. First time, I lost my hair, like the doctor said. Mm -hmm. Wow! <laughs> and that right there is devastating. My mom, my mom had cancer, and you know she's had to go through radiation and chemo a few times. And you know, for us that don't go through it, it's like it's not a big deal. Your hair will grow right, back. Right, right. But, but I have it a is. lot of clients that I talk to who are like, it's devastating. I mean, it, that it is, is like a, such a big piece of you that you know. Um, so losing hair before I didn't. I didn't think that such a big thing, you know. The hair we grow back, mm -hmm. right? But sure. it's not only losing hair. When I lost my hair, I I felt like every pore in my body, I felt like so painful. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was not big deal when I didn't have cancer. But when I experienced that myself, I was like, it is, it's, you know, you're not losing just hair. Mm -hmm. So every, hair in your body, like everything, yeah, eyelash, um, eyebrows, everything wow. here, you have nothing to protect you, so you're very sensitive to oh, any wow. dust. I never realized yes. that. My ex-husband described it as mm -hmm. um, like shards of glass in his head, oh, right, like when he right. would go to lay on the pillow, oh, he said yes. that it felt like shards of glass were like exactly. poking him in the head. That's why I felt like, oh now, I understand why women so afraid of losing hair when they have cancer. So not only that, my second chemotherapy, when I got the second shot at the hospital, everybody left me when they put everything on my body. My husband left to work, my doctor, my nurse, they left. It's just like, you have to be there for a couple hours, mm -hmm. right. just few minutes. I can feel that, that chemo, it's going through my vein, it's going up. You can up. actually feel it entering your body. I feel it. But the second time, I feel like sharp pain on my stomach. Uh -huh. And it's going up really quickly. Take seconds. It's up here. I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe. Wow. I felt like I was dying. Oh. And I felt that moment that 
I knew how people feeling when they are about going to die. It was uh, just up here. The whole my body went up, and now this is because you had an allergic reaction, right? Okay. Oh, so right. I called the nurse right away, and then she came. I, I tried to tell them something wrong, so they stopped the medication, and they told me that I have reaction, the allergy mm -hmm. reaction on a second time, uh -huh. and they told me this is not, not uncommon. So everybody can have this. Oh boy. So. They give me uh, Benadryl, and then I have to wait for a couple hours. And that time, I was like, you know, I got to do something for myself, mm -hmm. right? So I finished the treatment, just like everybody else. I didn't know the alternative approach until later on, when one of my friends, um, she passed away from brain cancer. She had breast cancer before and then she got second time was brain cancer. And that wake me up. It's mm -hmm. just like a wake up call. I have to do something for myself. I don't want to die like young, you know. Right. I was 36 when I'm done the treatment. I was 37. Wow. Then I start searching and study on my own, reading lots of books and research about how people get cancer to start with mm -hmm. and what actually causing it because everybody wants to know, right? Mm -hmm. How do you get cancer? And how you're to avoid a doctor cancer. always telling you, oh, nobody knows exactly. So go back to, you were talking about your job and your job was stressful um, and like how you, how you think that relates to um, you getting sick. Obviously, I think part of it now, now that I, I understand better, so how we get cancer is actually two things. It's one of the toxics that we put in the body. The body has too much chemical and toxins. From stress is from also part of that. Okay. Stress is the internal toxin that you put on your own, little by little from either work, from either your, anything that you stress about. Mm -hmm. Because the body actually doesn't know so what people don't realize is that the, the chemical reaction in your body breaks down the body and so it's susceptible to cancer and different things. Right. So when you are stressed, either when you're sad, mm -hmm. even when, when you watch like a horror movie, your body produces one of the hormones that's called cortisol. Mm -hmm. This actually is a, is a toxic to your body. And little by little, when you work hard, you stress, you are sad, you're miserable. The body produces that bad hormone, mm -hmm. and that is accumulated little by little, along with your diet, mm -hmm. not helping you to get rid of these toxins. And then right. the cells become inflamed, and then how people get cancer. And obviously there's a lot of controversy over <clears throat> the way foods are prepared now, opposed to the way they were, right. which is why a lot of people have a lot more allergies or maybe are susceptible to diseases? So um, with my stressful job, my typical diet here, I want to fit in because I, I came from Thailand. You know, I want to live like in like in America. Martin. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I just like eat American diet yeah. and just typical food and a lot of a lot of processed food. So with all that together, and that's I believe that So you how think the two things, the two components were like the stress, stress and then like the eating habits and not have enough rest okay so i have a question um you are you said you were a uh, you worked with computers software yes i was a software engineer for 20 years so what's really interesting to me i see a lot of people um, involved in careers that stress them out and they don't feel natural to them and now you're a holistic health coach is there a connection there where you were doing something were you stressed out about your job was it what, what do you think that had a, what, actually you know? since I was young <coughs> I'm already into nutrition but I didn't get a chance really change myself I was not serious about it until I had breast cancer and then when a friend of mine died and I I told myself I have to change so I was searching and researching then I started on my own reading lots of books and then I start taking some training to become a health coach I realized that um, a little bit back to uh, a few years ago when 
I ask myself, is it really, really the career and the job that I love to do? I enjoy doing and working in, in the IT field a lot, but when people talk to me about nutrition, you know, it's just like, Let I got up. energy. I got mm -hmm. energy to talk about it. I become alive, and then I realize that that is really me. So why don't I just change my career to do what I love to do, mm -hmm. right? Great. So then I, I help myself to stay well, be healthy, then I feel like I want to help others. And that's how I start from reading a lot of books and then start get the training. Then I, I, I was serious about it a couple of years ago that, hey, this is going to be my new career. Mm -hmm. I want to help others. I want other people to really stay well. And that's how I start to become a holistic health coach. Because I noticed that um, you said 10 years you've been cancer free. So do you th do you tr what do you attribute that to? Um, the most important thing is the mindset. Absolutely. Yes. So I have to learn how to reduce stress. Mm -hmm. You can work hard. I, I want everybody to know that you can work hard, play hard, but not stress about your job. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Changing the diet is not easy. No, it's not, not everybody wants to change. But what you can do is changing little by little by just picking the better choice, a healthier choice, mm -hmm. day by day. Some change is better than no change, right? Right. right. So I started by um, changing when I was working. I have two boys to take care, and I work full time, like a lot of women do. So I start changing, adding green smoothie to my diet, adding green juice, and eating better little by little. So I ha also have a very busy life, like a lot of women. So I think the other side of that too, of, of change, right? Because you know, we all say we want to do things, right? And I, I want to get healthier, you know, I want to live a better life, you know. Um, it's, it's like your reason, your why. And your why, you know, you said we're your boys. You know, like you, you want to be here. When you start to think about it outside of yourself, right? Right. And you're like, well, but I have to take care of my kids. Like, I want to be here for that. That makes it bigger and more profound and gives you a little bit more motivation, I think, to, you so know, to get it done. The why is the key. Right. Yep. I want. I want to see my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I. I don't want to die young. I have two boys. I. I need to. I want to raise my two boys, and I want to see they grow up. And so that's my first why. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to raise my two boys. Mm -hmm. the second why, I do it for myself. And the third why, I want to help others. When I, I found that what is actually. Um, there's a couple things that you can stay well, and it's not very hard. You can be cancer free. Mm -hmm. I want to deliver this message. I want to help others. Like, that's great. Yeah, that's that's my third why. Three things together. Mm -hmm. I can live my IT career, and I pursue what I really want to be is being the health coach and then help others. And part of that why is it because when you were going through it, you feel like you didn't have, you know, you didn't know what the options were. You didn't know that that you could do other things and you didn't have people to talk to you and kind of help you through the process, you know, of, of whatever, being in denial or being in pain, you know, um, you can share your experience and other people, you know, are going to have a better picture of what to expect and maybe what they can do um, if they're going through what you went through, opposed to me trying to tell them I, I've never had cancer, you know, so. Absolutely. Right. Right. And that's the reason that why I want to become the health uh, a health coach and helping others. Mm -hmm. That's a good reason. So there's another thing that, um, and I believe that cancer is a choice. So that's interesting and probably very controversial. <laughs> but I agree. But I agree right. in most cases it, it is. Or think about how many people have cancer. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their lifestyle, mm -hmm. they're stressed out, they're not resting, they're eating the wrong stuff, they're eating really fast, trying to on the go. They may be drinking things they shouldn't drink. Um, 
their their lifestyle just shows. <laughs> Dig. <laughs> their, their, <laughs> their lifestyle is um, is not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. it, it, a lot of times, yeah. you know, we we kind of stress ourselves out. Sometimes we pick jobs, careers that are just so contrary to what is really authentic to who we are, right. and we 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 got our you know go through our days and we're just trying so hard to to adapt and become <laughs> that that person, that IT person, that whatever it is that you're doing because you always thought that was what you had to do and you and you can get sick, you can get so stressed out and cortisol will pile up and on um, and cortisol has its purpose. Cortisol is just for fight or flight or f fight or flight and just when you're in danger, it's not meant to be every day all day long. So yeah, if you can lower your stress and learn some ways to adapt, sure. You you can't you can't enjoy wealth without good health. Right. So that's that's one of the things that's always in my head that working in the IT field, being a software engineer, I actually had a very good job. I um, I had a lot of people that very good friends at work, mm -hmm. you know. I enjoyed it, but You were overly what is, passionate about it. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. every every day when people talk to me and then I realized that my passion is about nutrition. And every time when I talk about food, the diet, or telling people what they should be uh, eating or how you can stay well without medication, and that's I just like I become alive. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like so excited about it. And that's and, the reason. And as far as your story of like you know eating better and sleeping better and not being stressed and stuff, like I've seen both sides of it. Like so, my mom has had cancer that's come back a few times, and she doesn't sleep well, she doesn't eat well, she doesn't do much well. Um, my ex-husband did what you did, you know, he took care of himself, he um, changed his diet, um, you know, he made sure that he wasn't um, eating things that were prepared or that had aspartame or different things in them, um, and he's been cancer-free That's probably great. as long as you. Yeah, he's right. in good health. So it has been 10 years for me, and and that's what I want to do from now is to help others, especially people who are still recover from cancer or preventing from cancer. And I believe that cancer is a choice, so you can choose to be healthier by changing your diet to be a healthier choice and then exercise a little bit, not stressing so much, and you can be cancer free. Um, is, do you have a website or a place where people can find you online? Well, I have my, my Facebook is called Stop Cancer with Natalie, and also a YouTube channel called Health Coach Natalie. Have, and how can you help coach other Natalie. people? Like, so if I, you know, just got diagnosed with breast cancer and, you know, I saw the show, like, how could you help me? What could you offer? So you can actually contact me. Um, my email address is Coach Natalie Proenka at gmail.com. We will have some information um, after this show. Or give me a call, then you can consult me. You can sign up with the coaching program. I have a VIP private coaching program, three months and six months program. Okay. Yes, and I also offer the online program. I have the online class. Uh, right now I offer one class. It's for detoxification because I believe that the death begins in the colon. So you have to clean your colon and clean your liver to stay healthy. So that's my first online class that I'm offering right now. And I'm going to have a class, the next online class, about um, beating cancer naturally. It's coming up soon. Great, that's awesome. I'll have to have you back. After yeah, that we'll have to have you back again. Talk a little bit more. That, I would be so happy to come back again. To you viewers at home, thank you so much for watching Whole Health Visions. If you have a story you'd like to tell or you'd like to be on the show, please send me an email at wholehealthvisions at gmail.com. I'm Heidi Martin. And I'm Natalie LaRoche. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you for watching.
This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.